Welcome back once again, all you CISSP wannabes. I am Colin Weaver. You are watching the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day because you are trying to get your CISSP certification and you want this test to be in your past so, so bad. Hopefully the two questions that I'm about to ask you are going to help you in that journey. So here comes question number one. All right, question number one is you are researching security solutions for a large fenced in area in your organization where physical assets are stored. The security solution that you choose is gonna to need to act as both a deterrent and also have an ability to gauge the level of corrective response uh, to an event. My question for you is, based on those criteria, which of these is gonna be the most appropriate solution for you to select? So go ahead and click on pause, think about it if you need to, reread the question, and then look at the answer choices and pick the right one. How about the first answer choice saying use guard dogs? Well, guard dogs are a deterrent because I know that if I see a bunch of large and intimidating looking dogs on the other side of a fence, my desire to climb that fence drops down to nearly zero. Um, so that would be good. However, the dog is not going to have the ability to gauge the level of corrective response. Um, if the dog is there to protect the property, it's going to protect the property, period. So the discernment and distinction between somebody who's a true threat versus somebody who just made a bad choice um, is not uh, something that a guard dog is going to help you do. So I would not recommend that solution in this scenario. How about some closed circuit uh, TV cameras that are going to record whenever motion is detected? Well, they certainly serve a detective functionality and that's they're gonna be able to see when somebody is there, and in this case, make a recording of it. Uh, but where's the corrective capacity of CCTV? Uh, it's not around because it doesn't exist. So um, the only way that CCTV would be of any value is if somebody was monitoring those, they could see that something was occurring on the image, on the screen, on the camera, and then were able to actually go in and physically get involved. But um, regular old CCTV record when stuff moves kind of stuff, not the right answer here. How about you install some razor wire on top of your fences? Yeah, no, <laughs> come on. Um, you're just gonna hurt people. So there is no gauging of corrective response that razor wire is gonna go in and do. It's gonna, it's gonna cut you as thoroughly as it can possibly cut you. So that is not their best answer. It is a deterrent because again, you see razor wire on top of a fence, you're like, yeah, I really don't wanna get tangled up in that. But uh, response levels for corrective response? No, it doesn't have that. That leaves us with the last choice, which is hire a security guard. And that's your best choice. Security guard is going to serve as a deterrent. Okay, people can see that there's a security guard there, so they become less likely or less willing or less desiring in going in and actually doing this. And um, because this security guard is a human, the security guard is able to go in and make a judgment call on just how much corrective action should be taken. So in this scenario, that is our best choice. All right, let's move on to question number two. Uh, in question number two, you have received a PDF document that has been signed using a self-signed certificate. Okay. My question for you is, what should you do before viewing the document? Click pause, read the answer choices. When you're ready, click play, and I'll walk it through for you. Choice number one says that you should hash the PDF and then compare that hash to the hash that you recovered from the digital signature. Man, that junk sounds all kinds of true because that's what you would do in a normal day if you trusted the certificate that was uh, used in the signing process. So the problem that we have in this scenario is that we don't trust the signer. It's a self-signed certificate. Nothing in the question suggests that you've chosen to already trust this certificate, so don't read into it. Okay, somebody's got their own public key, private key pair, they have a certificate, and the public key is associated with the certificate, and they now out run around signing PDFs and then distribute them to people and think that people are gonna accept that. And we're not gonna do that. We need to be vigilant. So let's keep looking at other answer choices and figure out uh, which one's right. How about you add the user certificate to the list of trusted certificates on your computer that you're doing this with? Okay, that seems like a perfectly valid answer. Uh, it's not the right answer uh, because we need to keep reading and think about what other things we might wanna do because if you were to just say, oh, this has been signed by this person and oh, here's that certificate and it's not signed by a trusted authority, well, let me just go ahead and add it to my local list of trusted certificates, uh, you've made a poor choice because you don't have any degree of assurance uh, from the information that we have in this question that this certificate is worthy of trust. 
That brings us to choice number three, which says that you should manually verify the certificate using an out-of-band method. And that is the right answer. Okay. So you get a document that's been signed by a certificate, in this case it's self-signed. You need to make sure that the person who self-signed their own certificate is actually worthy of your trust. And that's going to involve you doing some sort of a manual verification where you talk to the person on the phone and you compare uh, you know, the serial number that's on the certificate or some other mechanism that you're going to go in and do to make sure this certificate is legit. And then once you've done an actual manual verification, because there's no PKI to handle the verification for you, then you can decide to um, maybe even go so far as to do what the previous answer choice said, which was to actually add the certificate to the list of trusted certificates on your system if you're going to be encountering the certificate a lot. But uh, do not add it to your list of trusted certificates until you have actually verified that it is trustworthy. And unfortunately, it's a manual process. The last answer choice, that's just crazy talk, saying that you're going to use the private key to go in and validate the signature on the file. Um, you don't have the private key. At least you shouldn't. Um, so, uh, no, and you, you wouldn't do that even if you did have the private key. So the private key is not used to validate signatures. So you need the public key to validate a signature because the signature was encrypted with the private key and you need the corresponding public key to do the decryption. That would be right. So that last answer is just all kinds of crazy. So hopefully you didn't choose that one. All right, crushed it. Two more questions done. Hope you enjoyed them. And I'm going to leave for a while, but I'm going to come back with two more questions.